They came from all around the state to share their stories and perspectives, all of them teenagers who were connected in some way to mental health issues and advocacy. We met Braden from Jackson Independent Schools in Eastern Kentucky, where he's a peer leader with their Sources of Strength program, an evidence-based suicide prevention initiative. Allison, a senior in Louisville who founded a youth mental health advocacy organization called Stamina. Kaylin, a Berea resident who's experienced anxiety issues and is part of promising Appalachian leaders. Sean, who's been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, bipolar disorder, and OCD, and now supports other young people through the Kentucky Partnership for Families and Children. Breon, a freshman in college with bipolar disorder and depression who once attempted suicide, but then went on to help start the Butler High School Sources of Strength program. And Trevor, who has autism and experiences anxiety and depression, but also has found support and an outlet for expression through the Kentucky Partnership for Families and Children. I asked them about what they see around them and the unique challenges of today's teens. I had a, I have a really good friend and he was suffering from depression and bipolar and lots of anxiety and he was posting a lot of things on social media and he was just trying to get help. The school was eventually able to help him but it took a really long time. You know, he was Threatening, he was threatening to commit suicide. And so I just kept thinking of what would have happened if he wouldn't have waited for them. In Kentucky, there's um, one of the only laws that has to do with mental health education is that every student has to get some kind of suicide prevention training before September of every year. And the way that my district fulfills that is with a 20 minute or so video. And it's the same exact video every, every year. year, every, every yes. year from <laughs> sixth grade until when you graduate high school, you watch yes. the same exact video and you'll see it seven times before you graduate. I come from a community that you really don't talk about mental health. It's just the, okay, you're fine. You keep on moving. It's just like, oh, you you'll get through it and you keep on moving. You rest to the side. But it was until, um, I got to high school my freshman year when I actually attempted to commit suicide, it was, then that it was taken more serious by people in my community, people in my school. Because there have been times where I felt like there was no reason to be here. And just a lot of things been going on at times. Your school experience, being at school, was that really tough for you? Middle school. Middle school? It's just so bad. What was it like? Just every day was just torture. Teased and bullied? Mm-hmm. How like, did you... It was so bad that my parents would have to physically carry me into the school at times. I am a person with lived experience in mental health. I've been suffering, per se, from it since birth. But I think I've treated it more as a trial that I have to overcome than a weakness or a flaw that I will let control me. I've taken what is wrong as a part of me rather than something that shouldn't be there and I've grown and I've accepted challenges. You know, what do you want adults to understand about this that you feel like they don't quite get? With uh, most adults, uh, if their uh, child or yeah, uh, may start to develop uh, mental problems and mental illness and they might go to other parents and and uh, because that's usually who, you, who they go to first, their parents when they start developing it, mm -hmm. to ask them because they're their mentors, they're the people that they look up to and they, uh, and they may talk about them and then their parents may say, oh, that's every teen. Every teen goes through, that's every kid. And I think uh, uh, adults need to understand that it's not everybody sometimes. Like uh, you, don't, you don't know what your child's going through. You can't be in their shoes and think like they do, so um, I just, just to have an open mind and look more into it and think more about it. Is there anything in particular you want your parents to say or ask you? To, I will, personally me, I would want them to take me serious. If I say that I'm going through something and I don't know what it is, because that's how I was, I'm like, okay, look, this is my feeling, I don't know why I'm feeling this, I don't like it. I don't know what to do. Help me. 
take me serious and actually help me. I want you to be there and say, it is going to be okay. I have you every step of the way. You're supposed to be my parent. How many times have you all felt alone? Have each of you felt alone at any particular yes. point? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like everyone really does. Yeah, especially teenagers. Yeah, I think I'm on the opposite foot. I have my mother, who has been my biggest supporter throughout my entire life, and I've been told countless, numerous times, "It'll be okay. Everything's going to be all right. Things just happen, and it'll all lead up to something. Just let it play out." And I think what I most want from anyone is to be told it's up to me to fix my own problems rather than leaving it up to chance because I mean as brutal as it may sound that's what me and some other people may need is the slap to awakening to realize yeah at some point I have to put my foot down and realize I need to change things need to be better and I need myself to work towards making myself better mm -hmm. rather than relying on the world to just help fix me be yeah, brighter. don't let and your I'm on a completely up a completely different perspective than both of them i've for me what i want is my parents to notice i'm struggling with something and just kind of just kind of let me do my thing mm -hmm. but like have precautions in case i go down worse because i've heard like it's okay, we love you, we're here for you, so much that I've gone numb to it. It means nothing to me anymore. Right. I think one of the best things that parents can do, especially when they find that their kid is struggling, is just to ask how they can help. Because like we just heard, everyone processes their mental health differently and everyone needs different things. So if parents are just always supportive, but always flexible with their kid and asking them really, what is the best way that I can help you? How can I be there for you? That's the way that is, it leads to the best outcome for everyone. Yeah. Because like I said before, everybody's situation is different. He needs a little push. I need the loving. He needs to be alone. That's what your child needs because they'll let you know.